Welcome back to Visual Basic for Beginner series. In this tutorial, I would discuss loops. I hope that you have reviewed the first four tutorials in this series, which covered installing Visual Basic 2010 Express, downloading it, compiling and running uh, a simple application, understanding variables, data types, and assignments, and also understanding if and the select case statements for making decisions. The objectives of this lesson are to learn the for and the while loops. Let's start with a simple for loop. The for statement provides a compact way to iterate over a range of values. It is often referred to as the for loop because of the way in which it repeatedly loops until a particular condition is satisfied. So let's look at this for loop. In this case, the counter variable is i, which has been defined as an integer type. This is the beginning value of i, and this is the ending value of i. You can also specify the step keyword, but if you don't, then the step by default is 1. So this is where the for loop begins, and this is one. This is where it ends. So let's start to see how this for loop would work. When you enter the for loop, the value of the variable i is set to 1, the initial value. It is going to go through all one or more statements, in this case only one, of the loop, go all the way to the next. So the first time through, it will it'll have the counter variable value as 1, so it's going to say count equals 1 and so forth. Then it goes to the next, which will then go back and increment the value of the variable, the counter variable i by 1, and now i is 2, and so forth. So this loop would keep on going as long as the counter variable, the value of the counter variable i is less than or equals 9. Once it becomes 10, the loop is going to be terminated. If you run this loop, this is what it, this is the output that you're going to get. So the first value of i that is printed is 1, and the last value of i that is printed is 9. When i is incremented to 10, then it is outside the range of this loop, so that the loop is terminated. Here is a little more complex loop, or two loops, or better, nested loops. So in this case, we have an outer loop, says for i equals 1 to 5, this is where the for loop begins and this is where it ends. Inside that for loop, we have another loop on the counter variable j, which begins at 1 and it, it ends at i. And remember, the i is going to be defined by the outer loop. So let's try running this loop. Let's try understanding this loop. So you enter the loop, i equals 1, then it says uh, j equals 1 to i, meaning 1 to 1. It's going to print 1 right here. Then the inner loop ends because it has to only iterate it one time, i was 1. It now goes back to the top of the loop, the top of the outer loop. The value of i is 2 now. Now when you enter the inner loop, it says j equals 1 to 2. So it will go through this loop, go through this statement two times. The value of the variable i, of course, will remain 2. Now let me show you a feature of Visual Studio, a debugging feature. So what I have done is taken the code and copied it over here. It's within submain and then what I am going to do here is move against that line in the margin area and click there once. And a red dot appears, the line is highlighted in red. This is called setting the breakpoint. Now run the program by clicking on the start button and when it comes up against that line, it is going to pause that program. Now you can step through this program, step through the lines of code. So it's waiting right there. If you press the function key 10, it'll step down. So in this case now it is going to, it's ready to execute this line highlighted in yellow. It has already completed this line. The value of the variable i is 1. 
so your j goes from 1 to 1 it will execute that once print the value of i one time move on to the next so that's the end of the inner loop and uh, it is uh, moving on it has reached at the end of the outer loop and it's going to pick up the next value of i so now the value of the variable i is 2 and this loop would run two times once twice so it printed the value of i two times so you can uh, use this technique to learn about the code and also when you start writing larger programs this is a very helpful technique in debugging your applications in this example I will show you how you can use the exit do statement to exit out of a do loop while you are inside the loop itself so the do loop begins right here do while true in this case the condition is going to be always true which means this is an endless loop it will keep on going forever because this can never become false so you enter the loop here I get the input from the user convert that to a double the variable x and here is the condition now it says if x is less than 0 then exit do so if you ever give me a negative number then this loop is going to be terminated otherwise it will take your number a positive number and add it to sum it will keep on appending it to or adding it to the variable sum so this loop is used to add up all the numbers that the user entered so in this example the user user entered 3.5 4.7 8.9 and then minus 1 telling me to terminate the program and the program then prints the sum which happens to be 17.1 which is the sum of 3.5 and a 4.7 and 8.9 so this demonstrates the exit do statement you also have an exit for statement which can be used with the for loop so that was a quick introduction to loops I have three more topics coming up in this series the next one is arrays after that classes and uh, object oriented programming and after that how to develop a Windows application or how to build a Windows application in this example I will show you how to build a simple calculator please visit my site uh, it contains tutorials on many topics like Visual Basic, C Sharp, Java, and PHP. Thank you for listening.